Cunningham, and the Spartans of Sycamore will be the home team. Let us now meet the personnel for this game. For the visiting team, the Flaming Hearts of Effingham, who entered the game with a record of 22 wins and 16 losses. Please. He's going to take it himself for a championship! Oh. A, a double play wins it the three! Turn it to the end zone. What a catch! The guy is on touchdown! The final day of the Illinois High School sports year is today and it begins at 9 o'clock a.m. We welcome you to the third place game in Class 3A and it'll match the Effingham Flaming Hearts and the Spartans from Sycamore. Hi again, everybody, and we welcome you to a gorgeous day here in Joliet at Dooley Health and Care Field. These two teams falling in the semifinals yesterday. Effingham dropping a 9-1 decision to Grays Lake Central, and on the other side, Sycamore shut out by Nazareth Academy, 
three to nothing. And mark these two teams, you know, it's hard to say you're just happy to be here, but for the, historically, for these two schools, they're happy they are here. Sycamore, of course, first time ever in the state baseball finals. And on the other side for Effingham, their first appearance in 81 years. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that you read the scores. Sycamore with a really potent offense, Dave, and Effingham with one run. Sycamore was zero yesterday. I expect some more runs to be scored today. So there'll be a little bit more action for you to call on the base pass for both these teams. Pretty much the same lineups as yesterday. We'll take a look at Effingham first. The Flaming Hearts, the visitors today. Jack Harper to shortstop to lead it off. Then Caden Coberline in right field. Camden Raditz is at second. Quest Hall again hits in the cleanup spot, followed by the catcher Miles Maxiden and then Colton Webb at first base. Bottom three in the order, Evan Weymouth. Spencer Fox is designated a hitter and he's batting today for the pitcher. Josh McDevitt and the lineup run it out by left fielder Caden Nichols. For Sycamore, the Spartans will go this way in the outfield. Connor Willier, Keith Kiefer Tarnoki and Tommy Townsend. Left side of the infield, Matt Rosado and Colin Severson. You'll notice a left-handed shortstop in Severson. Joey Puglio along with Lucas Winburn on the right side. Kyle Hartman once again is behind the plate. He was a DH yesterday. He's the pitcher today. That's Owen Piazza. Piazza Dave is a 5'10", 180-pound senior. He's 7-0 and on the season, 34 innings pitched, 33 strikeouts compared to 14 base on balls, 2.26 earned run average. He'll take his pitching talents to Aurora University next year. Aurora University made it to NCAA Division III uh, second round, so a great year for the Spartans. Owen Piazza will be a part of that. Did not pitch last year due to some elbow problems, but here he is pitching in a trophy game here today. So we're ready to get started. A full day of baseball coming up. And to call the first pitch of many today, the Hall of Fame voice of the Illinois High School Association. Dave Bernhard. Well, thank you very much, Mark. And we're going to have four games, a couple of third place games, a couple of championship games. 4A coming up later. First pitch from Piazza to Jack Harper misses. Harper, the 6'2 senior, playing in his final baseball game, leads this club the 417 average. Yesterday, Effingham held to just two hits against Grays Lake Central. Piazza ran the first one up there about 87, 88 miles an hour and backed it up with a slider on the outer edge. Harper rakes this one to right center field. Tracking it down is Kiefer Tarnoki. Covered a lot of ground. Boy, he ended up quite deep there in right center. Tarnoki got a good jump off the baseball, was able to gather that one easily. One of the best center fielders he's coached in 25 years, said his coach, Jason Cavanaugh. Jason Cavanaugh, 564 wins in his 25th season for Effingham. Doing the head coaching, it is Kern McNeely, his third season, 50 wins, 41 losses. Flaming Hearts today come in 22 and 16. Number two hitter is Caden Coberline. He had one of the two hits yesterday. Also drove in a run, the only run of the game for the Flaming Hearts. And how about Jason Cavanaugh's 2023 campaign? This one is ripped down the left field line, hooked and Ended up quite foul, rolling along the left field into the bullpen. In the month of February, he was inducted into the IHSA BC Hall of Fame. In the month of June, he makes it to the state (laughs) finals. So that's quite the year he will remember. Pitch inside to Coberlani, be followed by Camden Raditz. Outfield playing fairly deep for Coberline. The count two and one. Make that two and two. Folks from Effingham are perched out in a sunshine, very comfortable morning. This one will go to right field. This will get down to base hit for Coberline. Very patient at bat. He turns to the crowd and wants a little love for that base hit. <laughs> Turns his crowd on the right field side. Pretty good turnout, Effingham. They'll probably be home and have a parade or a cookout or whatever by what, late afternoon, I would assume. They'll bring up Camden Raditz. Raditz yesterday, strikeout, he was 0 for 3. This is fouled away and out of play. Effingham hitters being very aggressive. First three guys getting up and getting really good swings 
in attacking the baseball against Piazza. Well, that's interesting too. You know, for a lot of teams, you know, they get to the third place game, they emotionally drain from the semifinal yesterday. It's a called strike. You change your approach and say, hey guys, let's just go up there, rip, or or do you say, you know, let's play the same game we played for 35, 40 games this year? Yeah, I think I think the approach is just go out and have fun. Use your skills completely and enjoy the last day together. To the left side, lefty Severson will knock it down. That's the best he can do. Nice diving stop by Colin Severson. And yes, you're just tuning in. You didn't see us yesterday. Severson is indeed a left-handed hitting shortstop, or excuse, left, left-handed feeling shortstop, which is very much in difference to what you would normally see on a baseball field. But they needed his bat in the lineup, and they know he could pick up a ground ball, and the rest is history. He was inserted that spot about midway through the season. First pitch swinging is Quest Hull. Deep right field, right on the track as Tommy Townsend, runner tags from second. Coberline will go to third. Flaming Hearts swinging with authority here. I think they've had more good passes of the baseball already than they had the entire day yesterday because they did only put up one run. Took them five innings. Didn't get their first run until the sixth yesterday. Now they have a runner 90 feet away with two outs for the catcher, Miles Maxiden. Maxiden also a senior. Short lead at first. Home plate umpires, Paul Packelhofer, first base, D. Ray Tucker, and John Sear, our third base umpire here in our first class 3A semifinal. It'll be Grays Lake Central and Nazareth Academy playing for the 3A title following this game. Strike two. And Coach Kerr McNeely told us that his, his team has become much more plate disciplined. Well, they've hit nothing but good strikes here today. Runner at first goes, they'll throw down to third, the third baseman, Masato was about 10 feet behind the base runner. They were conceding that Stolen base of second, so Rosado, pretty surprised fella, headed the ball headed his way. You know, in that left Hartman's hand, I thought, goodness, that's going to end up in left field, but Rosado was right there. Big opportunity here for Maxiden. Looking down on the Sycamore dugout, and man, DH and a Jimmy Antman, he's got a gallon jug of water. So if he's going to drink all of that, he better hit the ball over the wall because he won't be able to run very quickly around the bases. 2-2 <laughs> two pitch. Severson will get a shot at it. Up, throws a little low, picked out of there by Lucas Winburn, and that will close out the inning. Two runners left on in scoring position for Effingham. will go to the bottom of the first. Visual image photography is the official photography service authorized to provide fans attending IHSA state finals with action and award. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Spartans, 33 wins in 39 games this year. Their batting order will start with Keeper Tarnoki, followed by Matt Rosado and Tommy Towns and Jimmy Entman, the designated hitter today. He's batting for the pitcher. Those two reverse roles yesterday. Kyle Hartman behind the plate, then batting six spot. Connor Willier, Lucas Winburn moves to the seventh spot. Colin Severson, eight. Joey Puglio, second baseman, will bat ninth. The outfield for Effingham. Caden Nichols, Quest Hall, and Caden Coberline. 
Evan Weymouth mans the third base spot. Jack Harper is at short. It's Camden Rand. It's the second baseman. Colton Webb at first. Miles Maxiden behind the plate. And Josh McDevitt will get to see the ace of the Effingham staff. Yeah, we have a treat this morning seeing this 6'2", 195 pound senior. He will take his talents to the University of Missouri next year. So a big time prospect with big time numbers. He is 10 and two on the season, 72 innings pitched. He's punched out, this is incredible. 72 innings pitched, 126 mm. strikeouts compared to his 25 base on balls in a minuscule, microscopic 0.68 earned run average. He won the super sectional game on 85 pitches with a four nothing shutout. And he was touching 93. 94 miles an hour, so it's going to be a treat to watch him compete here this morning. First batter he faces will be Kiefer Tarnoki. Tarnoki had a hit in three at bats yesterday. Tarnoki also hit by a pitch, so the leadoff man was on base a couple of times. Takes a little off of that. Quickly, Tarnoki down the count 0 2. Tarnoki, a switch batter, if you will. Obviously, it's the right hander hitting left handed. Don't see many switch batters anymore. And follow this one back out of play. Pass to third baseline. Two levels here at Dooley Health and Care Field. Top level, a sweet level, and the press level. Devitt delivers. This is chop foul to the right side. Tarnoki getting a couple good passes at the baseball. This is the type of hitter as a pitcher drives you crazy, right? He just does his job, takes you deep into counts. A pest, if you will, as a leadoff hitter. Okay. <laughs> and that's meant in a totally complimentary way. Ball and two strikes for Tarnoki, followed by Rosado. Sycamore fans have come out here early, not too long of a drive for Sycamore, would you say maybe an hour? Yeah, that would be fair. Sycamore in the far western suburbs near DeKalb. The count's gone from 0-2 to 3-2. Spartans looking to get their leadoff man on here in the bottom of the first. Outfield playing fairly deep for Tarnoki. He'll spoil this one. So this already a seven pitch at bat, I believe. Yeah, quality. He, he has not missed on a pitch yet. He's foul, uh, his two strikes are foul balls. So he's getting some pretty good passes. This one lined right to the shortstop. Jack Harper did not have to move. Really good at bat from the leadoff position. And Harper right there in his tracks, did not have to move as you mentioned, and was able to catch that line drive slicing away from him. Matt Rosado had a hit in two official at bats yesterday, hitting in the two spot. Take that first pitch. Inside Rosado this season, the junior, 381 batting average coming into the tournament. So that will have nudged up just a bit with the one for two yesterday. Again, the outfield playing fairly deep for Rosado, especially right fielder Caden Coberline. Well, there's a big gap in right center field between Quest Hall and Caden Coberline. But besides that, you know, with the velocity that McDevitt owns. You think they might be playing batters to swing a little bit late, but they're not. Both first two hitters, they played the batters straight up. There's a breaking ball that Machado will look at. There you go, off speed, bend it a little bit on a 2-0 count. Side of the open stance, he'll close it up. Swing and miss right through a fastball. Now that was giddy up on that one. That <laughs> is his most explosive fastball. We just started the ball game, but that one just got up on Rosado in a hurry. 
Right there, outside corner, throws him. Out number two. Batting third for Sycamore, the right fielder, number 44, Tommy, Tommy Townsend. Tommy Townsend came on in relief yesterday. Really did a nice job. Only allowed one run in four innings pitched. Kept them in the game. Nazareth picking up an early 2 to nothing lead. And Townsend held him right there. He did a nice job. I love to watch his approach to the plate, too. He'll play ba baseball at Butler University next year. One for three in the day yesterday. Just four hits for Sycamore. So these two teams combined in the semifinals for just six hits, and that's one of the reasons they're playing here at 9 o'clock. David, economy of motion in his delivery. Yeah, that was his first straight change. He got underneath it, pushed the wood the outside, and actually slowed his arm speed. Pitch you want to have at the next level. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The 2-2. Two -two. Right on it. Now that was a change as well. And Townsend was right on it. Look how deep the outfield's playing. Oh my goodness. Hole in center and Coberline and, and right very deep. And for that matter, Nichols yeah. in the left is quite deep for the left hand hitter. Right down the line. Townsend will hit the bag. Headed for second, tracked down by Coberline and a two out double from Tommy Townsend. Boy, he just turned on that ball, got the barrel in front of the hitting zone, was sitting on it, and got it. And that's the kind of Division I hitter he is. Oh, so strong. And the velocity of that baseball off the bat was big time. So Jimmy Antman will get his first plate appearance here in this tournament. 402 hitter, but yet when he is pitching, he does not hit. He's hitting in a cleanup spot today for the pitcher Owen Piazza. Well, as you said, it's a philosophy that Sycamore and Jason Cavanaugh have. The pitcher is not going to hit today because Antman, like I said, the 402 batting average, seven home runs for Antman as well to go along with nine doubles. He'll play at Heartland Junior College next year. Really solid baseball school. How far north Bloomington Normal is that? Oh, maybe about 100 feet. Yeah, is that that close? <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's, yes, it's in the, yeah. I think it's in the city limits of normal. And do they play at the, the field in, in the, normal? Yes. Yep, the corn crib. For the corn crib. Hammond now faced with an 0-2 count. McDevitt, the runner in scoring position. Townsend stretching his lead. Hammond's able to fight it off, nearly kept it inside the bag, instead foul down the left field line. With the turf and the sun and the glass, at this time of day, really hard to pick up the baseball off the bat. But you were all over that call. Or was I? <laughs> <laughs> Hammond, an imposing figure in that batter's box. He is big. A big strong kid. Townsend is picked. He had that big lead. Great timing, McDevitt to Jack Harper, and that closes out the inning. So. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. 
Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Back in our third place game, Effingham and Sycamore in this 9 a.m. matchup here from Dooley Health and Care Field. We've got two pretty good pitchers on the hill today. Talked about both teams struggling on offense in their semifinal losses yesterday. We do expect to see some more runs scored this ball game. Go back to that last play of the top of the Lady inning. Tommy Townsend was picked off of second. It was all about the feet of Josh McDevitt on that set play. Really good execution that time for the defense of Effingham. Leading things off here in the top of the second is Colton Webb, the first baseman for the Flaming Hearts. Both teams left runners in scoring position in the first inning. First pitch swinging, this one in no man's land. It pops out of the glove of the shortstop, Colin Severson. And Colton Webb not really hustling down the line. He kind of conceded that. Severson not happy with himself. But the error will put a runner at first base for Effingham to start the second inning. That was strange in many ways. Yeah, and Kiefer Tarnoki, we've been praising his outfield play. That's a ball that he maybe could have taken over. I don't know about the run, but if Severson said he had it the whole way, he thought he was tracking the baseball, just popped out of his glove. I'll bring up Evan Weymouth. Good cut from Weymouth, batting in the seventh spot, the third baseman for Effingham. Average size lead at first for Webb. And Piazza will move him back. Kerr McNeely, third base coach, head coach, going through the signs. Really cool, another one of those guys, he's a graduate of Effingham High School, comes back and gets his alma mater to a trophy game. Well, he may be a graduate of Effingham. His assistant coach, Kyle Burgoyes, now this could be a problem. He's a graduate of Effingham St. Anthony. Yeah. So I'm not sure how they resolve their differences. Of course, that's great rivalry down there between the public and private school. A little bit tardy as Weymouth as he fouls it away. I think Effingham St. Anthony had the best this year in the Braggy Rice City. 4 0, 10 to 2, and then one 8 to 1 loss. So St. Anthony won 2 of 3 in the rivalry game. Right back to Piazza. He goes to Severson for one. The turn. Got him. The lefty turns it at short. 163. Good double play ball. That was all started by Piazza, who had the presence of mind to wait for Severson to come across the base, throw him a strike, let him right to first base on that. Two quick outs to Spencer Fox, designated hitter for McDevitt. So you think Severson has forgotten about that drop pop-up now? He's in the middle of the double play. A sign of a good player. You make an error, next play is a thing. Severson just exhibited just that. Piazza continues to work in the stretch, and this one is roped into left center field. A two-out hit from Spencer Fox. Third hit of the day for Effingham. That exceeds their total from yesterday's semifinal against Grays Lake Central. Next batter for Effingham, the left fielder, number 41, Caden Nichols. Reached number nine spot in the order for Caden Nichols. Nichols yesterday pitched, went three innings, gave up three runs, struck out a batter, and he moved to the outfield after that. He ended up picking the, up the loss in that ball game, dropped his record to six and five. It's a 227 hitter coming in, 0 for 1 yesterday. 
And this will be foul. Didn't even get to the coach's box on the first base side where it's picked up by Lucas Winburn. Both fielder Willier playing fairly short for the left-handed hitting Nichols. Curveball, slow, slow, slow. One and two. Reaching out is Nichols. He's able to spoil it, stay alive for another one. Well, Effingham was in the tournament in 1942. They did not trophy. This will be their first. But I got to ask you, did you call that game in 1942? No, I was busy that weekend. <laughs> stolen base, but instead a called strike three. So wipe out any stolen base. Nichols goes down looking. Not crazy about the call, but it keeps Effingham off the board. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning. Scoreless here in Joliet. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. You're watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships right here on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. You know, we were in just, of course, ask if you called that 1942 game, <laughs> but in all seriousness, all you've given to the IHSA with the different sports, how many, how many events do you think you've covered? IHSA events. We know you were a coach, but yeah. just from you know, a media I, standpoint. Yeah. So I, I, Are you in the th on the thousands? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I did actually have to count them up. I think it was about five, six years ago that I got the Distinguished Media Service Award, which is one of the greatest honors I have yes. gotten. In fact, I want to talk about that in a second. Not about me, though. But uh, I think at that time I was like a 21 or 2200. Oh, my goodness. Between, and this is between announcing and writing and everything. First pitch to right field. One up. Lead off hitter in the inning, Jimmy Entman. Remember, he was there when Tommy Townsend was picked off of second after a two out double. Up now is Kyle Hartman. And the reason I bring up the, uh, that Distinguished Media Service Award is there's a gentleman, uh, I don't know, probably 60 feet from us, maybe a little bit farther. Broadcasting the games for Effingham at the WEXF, that's Greg Sapp. He received the IHSA Distinguished Media Service Award in 2015. So uh, a legend, several booths down, making a trip here to Joliet. Yeah, what a great opportunity for him to call a you know, state tournament with his hometown mm -hmm. radio as well, because he's given so much to high school athletics and really a neat story. And very deserving as were you when you got the award actually right here at this field. Yes, very cool. No balls, two strikes to Hartman. He'll go down swinging. You know, I don't think you can understate how, how big it is a deal it is for a team that you cover all year, a school you cover all year, to reach the state finals as an announcer, as a sports writer, as a media member of any type. It, it really is, you talk to, the, and we see, we talk to all these folks, how ex genuinely excited they are for that school they've been covering. Well, you you know, the old adage, no cheering in the press box, but deep <laughs> in your heart, when you follow that team, you become a fan, and you actually become a, a member of the team in a pseudo way. And I don't mind that. You know, I, if, if I'm Effingham for 40 years, you know what, I'm gonna cheer in the press box for my team. Absolutely. Now, if I'm broadcasting for my Effingham radio station. <laughs> and you know, you would think, most of these players 
grew up listening to that yes. voice in every sport that he has covered. Connor Williams at the plate with two outs, left fielder for Sycamore. Two out walk, so in two straight innings. Spartans get a runner aboard this time. A walk to Willier. Lucas Winburn will take that white jersey with the, what do you call that, gradient? Number 24 on the back. Goes black to gold. We saw Winburn yesterday put on a clinic at first base. Yeah, he caught balls in foul territory. He caught tough pop-ups. He had a nice tag. Stayed down on a couple ground balls. Yanks this in the foul territory, and it will just reach the berm. Winburn was hitless in three at bats. We said Sycamore with just four hits on the day. You know, we don't have the same analytics as we do at the highest level of baseball, but you know, there's a category at the highest level, run saved defensively, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he creates some defensive opportunities you just cannot simulate. It's one of the reasons Sycamore fell just three to nothing to the defending state champs, Nazareth Academy. Just getting a piece of that one. But if you take all four semifinal wins, full respect to all four teams that are going to play for championships today. I thought Nazareth put on the best clinic yesterday. They were sound in every facet of the game. Winberg, the foul tip right into the glove of Miles Maxson, and that will close out the inning. Third strikeout of the game for Josh McDevitt. Another runner left on base. This one to Sycamore, and we've gone through two innings. 0-0, Effingham and Sycamore. Are you looking for a DVD? High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Gentleman walking behind home plate, our home plate umpire, Paul Packelhofer. We saw him last night work a game. He has the plate today, and this is just a tremendous honor for him here today, Mark, and a very momentous occasion for him. Yeah, he's been umpiring for decades. One of the best umpires in the state of Illinois. He's given his life to working with young people and young coaches around the baseball yard. It will come to an end today as he's retiring, spending some more quality time and probably resting those bones a little bit from all that squatting he's done behind plate. But an outstanding umpire, an outstanding career, and that's what officiating the IHSA is all about, is giving. Because he hasn't gotten rich doing it, but he's gotten rich from the love of the game. You know, and we have the opportunity to attend the team get-together, the cookout on Thursday before the tournament begins. And actually, one of the really cool parts is seeing all the umpires that have been chosen for this all sitting together, being recognized, and you can just feel, especially, you know, the other night with Andre Dawson speaking, yeah. you could just now feel their the love of the game and their love of officiating. In fact, I talked to a couple of fellows, and baseball, of course, is not their only sport. Right. You know, you have football, basketball, baseball, and in the era when we are really in need of officials, talking to those people would fire you up to say, hey, you know what, I'd like to stay involved in, the, in athletics some way. IHSA, of course, is like every state association looking for people to start the officiating career to make a little extra money, but more importantly, be impactful to young people's lives and keep athletics going. What a great extension of the classroom it is. 
New pitcher on the mound for Sycamore, Lucas Winburn, moves over from first base. So when Piazza goes a couple of innings, did not allow a run, and that may be what we'll see here from Sycamore, the leadoff hitter in the lineup, the leadoff hitter here in, in the third inning, Jack Harper, the first one to face him. Winburn 2-0 on the season. 38 strikeouts, 19 base on balls, 2.52 earned run average. Winburn headed to Kaskaskia Community College. Right there, what a great pitch right there at the knees in the outside corner. We'll get that new first baseman for you in just a bit. Winburn right over the top. This is fouled away. Harper flew out quite deep to right center field. Kiefer Tarnoki tracked it down as the lead off the game. Winburn takes something off of that one. Harper well ahead of it. Jack Harper goes down swinging. Caden Coberline, one of the three hits today, will come to the plate. Cumberland checks up. You hear that glove pop of Kyle Hartman. Ground ball to short. Severson on the move. The lefty fires across. 6-3 and two outs. Threw a strike across the diamond. Easy catch for Matthew Rosado, the new first baseman on that. A little 6-3 put out. Good job by Severson staying down and getting that true hop off this artificial turf. So Rosado moves from third base to first base. With two outs, Camden Raditz. The left side of the infield playing him respectfully deep. Raditz had an infield single in the hole. He Severson was able to knock it down last time, had no play. Owen Piazza went from the mound to third base. Just a little shifting of defensive positions. I have a feeling that Camden Raditz heard that ball. Yeah, that Coming ball through. popping. <laughs> Three and one. Couldn't catch up to that fastball. That one's tipping 87, 88 miles an hour. So we have seen some electric arms here in Joliet this weekend with more to come. How about that? He comes from behind the count. And Winburn gets his second strike out of the inning. Sycamore comes to the plate. It'll be 8-9-1 for the Spartans in the bottom of the third. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Each team has had some chances. 
Neither team has scored. Runs have been hard to come by for these two teams in Joliet. Just one run and six hits combined now for almost 10 innings. Colin Severson to get things going here for Sycamore. They'll bounce it right into that third base coach's box. Severson on a nice little turny run. Counting the sectional championship, super sectional, and state semifinals. He's four of his last eight. So he is really hot here down the tournament trail. And you mentioned, too, midseason they needed to find a, a spot in the lineup for his bat. He started the season as a courtesy runner. And here he is playing in the state finals. Josh McDevitt on the mound. He gets his third strikeout. Make that his fourth strikeout. Hard slider with great break late right there. Next batter for Sycamore, the second baseman, number 34, Joey Puglio. Joey Puglio, member of the semifinalist football team, along with three other players from the Sycamore baseball team. You know, how about that? You know, we've seen that throughout teams here in the state baseball tournament. Players, baseball players that have been able to play the state finals or in Julio's case, the semifinals in multiple sports. Well, winning breeds winning, success breeds success. And I'll tell you what, the more sports that you can play in junior high and high school, the better athlete you will become, even if you want to focus on something at the next level. Go out, be through as many experiences as you can, enjoy your high school experience. I feel like there's more and more coaches now that are encouraging that. I mean, not just tolerating it. I felt many years ago it was a tolerating multiple sports. Now it's a case of, yes, you do become that better athlete. You do get a little more experience in game situations. Ooh, that had some giddy up on it. Yeah, you will not be able to catch up to McDevitt up above your hands. Just almost impossible athletically to get the barrel over the hitting zone as catcher Miles Maxson tells his defense, move back, move back, move back in respect of this fine hitter Tarnoki. Tarnoki worked a long count his first time up for lining out to the shortstop. He's going to go after the first pitch here. And moving about two feet is the right fielder, Caden Coberline. So the signal from Maxson was spot on. A 1-2-3 inning, very quiet for Sycamore in the third. Three and scoreless here in your third place game in class 3A. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! My kid heard that solo! You see my kid? Yeah, yeah! Come on! Game number one of four here today from Joliet. Following this one, we'll get right to a state championship ball game, and that will match Grays Lake Central against your defending state champs, the Nazareth Academy Roadrunners. Nazareth winning its first state title last year. They look to go back to back. We're going to get that same situation in Class 4A. Edwardsville looking to go back to back. Now they've won multiple state titles. They've won five, but they'll take on Brother Rice. And that's a matchup of last year's semifinal game, a game that Edwardsville run. Our First 4A game will begin with a third place matchup with York and Nutrier, and that's going to go off at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And Joliet Catholic Academy won last week, and they mm -hmm. went back to back. So you're seeing the baseball powers being able to sustain their program success. 4 5 6 here 
for the Flaming Hearts, Quest Hull. Look to get things rolling. You know what, we do not name an all-tournament team in the Illinois High School Association Finals, but I'm going to name him on my all-tournament name team. You like Quest that? Quest Hull. <laughs> Great baseball name. I would love to hear the origin <laughs> of that first name, Quest, and it is Q-U-E-S-T. He draws a leadoff walk. Miles Maxiden, let's see what Curran McNeely would like to do with his number five hitter here with runs being scarce this weekend. I think you want to make sure you put the ball in play here, being IE on a normal situation. This would be a bunt situation. But this being a third place game, Curran McNeely might just have the attitude, let our guys play, mm -hmm. which I totally understand and respect. Now the square, the bat tilted, the ball went back. If there's one disappointment I've had, you already know what I'm going to say. Yes. This weekend is that bunts have not been executed. Gentlemen, all eight teams, get the barrel above the ball, get out early, let the ball hit the bat. <laughs> Catch the ball with the bat. Come on, guys. Now you have a worldwide <laughs> forum here, but I think you need to walk down and get to the PA booth yeah. and announce that. <laughs> In fact, four different announcements. When both teams are warming up for the game, I think that should be your request. <laughs> don't do it during the game. <laughs> Maxton goes down swinging. And you don't get a bunt down, and you end up not moving a runner along. And we've seen that numerous times this weekend. Colton Webb reached last time up. That was in the second up. inning. Pop up behind the bag at second base, short center field. Three players converged on it, and shortstop Severson had it fall out of his glove. Winburn making sure there's no funny business going on at first base with Quest Hall. Pretty good feet on the hill. Good hop pivot, pickoff move to first. One way lead at first base. Colton Webb this season, sophomore, 192 average. So what I mean by Colt, the one way lead, he's got his weight on his back foot at first base. Going to get himself a base hit right here. Line drive to center, pulling up at second is Hull. And the Flaming Hearts have something going here with one out in the fourth. That ball was on the inner part, and as a lefty, he inside out that baseball and muscled it into left center field for the one out base hit, getting Effingham a little bit of juice. Really good piece of hitting. Good job by Quest Hall at second. He got the second base turn and looked at his outfield, right? Check your outfield and know your distance. Evan Weymouth hit into a 1-6-3 double play. That closed out a threat, an early threat in the second inning. Lead at second to Hull, and you'll see he takes that lead deep in the baseline. He doesn't come all the way back to the baseline. He's looking, was thinking there, of course, is, okay, I can get a little bit better angle on my turn at third base. That and take away the shortstop angle on pickoff. So it does two, mm -hmm. has two purposes geometrically on angles. Pretty, pretty impressed by that geometrically, huh, math teacher? Yeah, it was the arcs and everything, <laughs> that was good. Really a deep lead here, forces Severson the shortstop well back. Slow roller, third base. He has it with it, drops it, drops it. First and third for Effingham. Make that bases loaded for Effingham. Yeah, it's ahead, plenty of time, and he feel it cleanly. He tried to rush things too much. Did not look that ball into his glove. I think initially he was deciding, do I come and get it and try to go back to third base and get the lead out, or do I run through it? That indecision is what caused him that little bobble that forced the error in. The Flaming Hearts right now looking for a little bit of fire. And they've got Spencer Fox, who doesn't get a hitter at the plate. He's single, a sharp single to left field his last time up. The infield is in. Fox takes a rip. Hull at third, Webb at second, Weymouth at first. A 
little bit high. Lucas Winburn is second error of the game for Sycamore. Puts them in jeopardy here. Swinging late and well out of play to the right field side. Sycamore's defense is basically in. Yet yeah, Winburn's pitching from the windup. Quest Hall get more down the line if he so chooses. Another foul ball. One thing you have to guard against, of course, there is that line drive right back to third baseman. Hall taking his lead in foul territory. And walking lead, big one, Webb at second base. Got him looking. Big time strikeout from Lucas Winburn. Quality pitch, you got it right on the edge and frozen right there with Spencer Fox. Fox had a pretty good approach coming up to the plate. What, he jumped on the first pitch, looking to drive in a run, then he froze on strike number three. They will leave it up to the number nine hitter, Caden Nichols. He struck out looking his first time up. Just missed. Two and oh. Good this one by Nichols, and if he's going to swing, it's got to be one pitch, one area, straight one. Looks like he may have been taking all the way yeah. there. Two one now becomes three balls and a strike. Well, if it was a straight take on 2-0, and oh, then you would have a straight take on 3-1. and one. Same philosophy. Didn't need to know. First run of the game, crosses the plate in the form of Quest Hall on the bases loaded walk to Nichols. Two walks and an error, a base hit. His plate of a run here for Effingham. Next batter for Effingham, the shortstop, number one, Jack Harper. That rolls it back to the top of the order. Jack Harper. Now the runner at third is Webb. Weymouth at second. Line drive just foul. Ooh, that didn't miss by much down the left field line. Harper's going to go to Southwestern Community College and they get themselves a good one. I really like his approach to the game of baseball. Great pitch from Winburn. He just handles himself as a player, both in the field and on the mound and at the plate. The one two pitch to short. Looking to go the short way, they do. So the damage is minimized, but a run crosses the plate. There was one hit, one error, and a pair of walks. Halfway home in this one. Effingham strikes first, the one to nothing. Flaming Hearts. Third place game in Class 3A. Sycamore will come to the plate and they're looking to pick up their first run. They've gone 10 scoreless innings in this tournament. Ezra shut them out three to nothing last night or yesterday and obviously through three innings here have not put a run across. And this is coming off an eight to nothing win in the super sectional 
over Rock Island, ending a 23-game winning streak by the Rocks. And you're talking about a team that's been shut out those innings that have 35 home runs on the season and average over nine runs per game. So they've seen some incredible pitching here in downtown Joliet. Boy, and that weighs on your mind too, right? You're used to just seeing the runs pile up and nothing has crossed the plate. Josh McDevitt on the hill, he's only allowed two base runners today. Yeah, but yesterday they faced John Hughes going to North Carolina, <laughs> and, and today they faced Josh McDevitt, and we already mentioned where he is going to school. He's a good one going to Missouri, so those are yeah. two pretty quality pitchers. <laughs> Matt Rosado leading it off in the bottom of the fourth inning. Rosado, best he can do is foul it back. Rosado struck out looking all the way back in the first inning. That shows you the effectiveness that Josh McDevitt has had here today. He's only faced one over the minimum, gave up a two out double in the first inning, and then promptly picked off Tommy Townsend at second base. And that was a changeup, right handed changeup. The, the ball turned over, came in right on the hands of Rosado. A quality pitch, really tough to handle. Rosado's able to spoil that. There's an art in that. He wasn't looking to necessarily put that in play, just let me fight this off and give me another chance. That could have done. He'd gone that change up down and in, running in on the hands. Then he went, expended the strike zone or, or the home plate to about an inch off that 17 inch plate and got the foul ball and another one. Yep. The chase is on, the ball rolling <laughs> down the berm. <laughs> the ball is faster than the kids. <laughs> and, the, and the guy at the fence that didn't run one foot, he, he picks it up. <laughs> All that work, and they come up empty-handed. The guy stand there doing diddly squat. <laughs> he comes up with a baseball. <laughs> Rosado goes down swinging. And that is a sixth strikeout for McDevitt. Yeah, I'm still laughing, thinking about that <laughs> berm. You always tell your athletes, let the game come to you. <laughs> Six Ks and... Three and a third innings. That's just about the pace McDevitt's gone at this year. Yeah, he can be or not. He can't. He is. He's overpowering. Because then you sit in the fastball, and he drops a slider in or move, makes a change. He turns another change up there. So he is a three-pitch pitcher with a dominating, explosive fastball. Townsend, a pretty good rip at that. So looking at the season statistics coming in, Josh McDevitt averages 1.75 strikeouts per inning, almost two strikeouts per inning through the course of a 72-inning season. Just incredible numbers. Up the middle. Shortstop sliding over. Harper with it. And gets him by half a step. Nice play by Jack Harper. Yeah, Harper knew how much time he had. He stayed down, measured his throw, didn't try to make a play that now wasn't that necessary. Didn't try to run through that hitter, really solid Jimmy play. Got to believe these infanters love playing on this true turf, true bounce turf. Especially with some fields that they've had to play yes. on the last few weeks. Now, granted, once you get to the super sectionals, in some case sectionals, you're playing on college fields or other professional fields. But it makes such a difference when you trust the hop coming your way. Jimmy Antman lined out to right field his last time up. Hits this one well. Back goes Harper, or make that back goes the center fielder, Quest Hall. And he'll make the catch, backpedaling and deep. But McDevitt continues to roll along. So that berm you see right there, that's where that all that action was that Dave Perhart was describing. And there was a little bit more hey, offense in that action there was in the top of this inning. <laughs> <laughs> Seventh straight retired by Josh McDevitt. Sycamore to bat with a one nothing lead, or Evans, Evingham to bat with a one nothing lead going to the fifth. Hey, Kentucky!
Doctor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! I can't hurt that solo! You see it like that? Yeah, Come on! High school sports fans, never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live game coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, nfhsnetwork.com. We are high school. Seven banners came to the plate for Effingham last inning. Caden Coberline will lead it off here in the fifth. Number two hitter in the order for Curran McNeely. Joy Paleo is at third base now for Sycamore. We'll see if we get any other defensive changes. Paleo moves from second to third, so we will have a new second baseman. Owen Piazza was manning the hot corner. Piazza started this game as a starting pitcher. Lucas Winburn working on his third inning of relief. New second baseman. For Jason Cavanaugh is Hunter Britz. Hunter Britz now at second. Britz got a little action yesterday defensively late in the game. Woo, that one got away. That sailed right over Paul Packelhofer's head, the home plate umpire. You wonder what he's thinking right now, his final game of his decades long career as an official. Same as a lot of seniors on this field this weekend. And burns up high with that one. Three and one. Ball four. How did last inning start that scored the only run? A leadoff walk. How was this inning start for Effingham? A leadoff walk. Data tells us that leadoff walks score 46% of the time. So, a little bit of trouble, 50-50 right now for Sycamore. When you don't find the strike zone consistently, especially against leadoff, man, you're asking to have a nice invitation for the offense to have an inning. Winburn, I mean, the discussion on the mound does not look real comfortable in that first series of pitches to Coberline. Brings up the number three hitter, Camden Raditz. Raditz, an infield single and a strikeout today. A little conversation results in strike one. We were talking about Effingham St. Anthony early. Raditz's father, Jim, played on St. Anthony's 92 team that went to the state finals. So father and son both get a chance to play in state tournament play. So I'm sure that there's some proud family members of Camden Raditz. Beginning of the year, I don't think anybody expected Raditz and the Flaming Hearts to get here. Pop up right field and Tommy Townsend calls off Ritz. It's out number one. And I say that because I don't know whether Effingham players believed it as Herman nice McNeely said, you know, we had to get to 500. And that was a turning point because then our players started to believe. In fact, Effingham started the season not only with three losses, but with a five and nine record after the first 14 games. And they had three three game losing streaks throughout the year. They had to overcome, and they did just that. Hull hooking down the right field line and just foul. 
Well, and that wears on you too, right? I mean, you get the yeah. the three game losing streaks, and you think, oh, here we go. Because three games to a person that doesn't play 162 games a year is a lot. Yeah, and you get your head coach Kerr McNeely. You got to tip your cap to him because he was able to keep this team together and have them looking forward rather than in reverse. The only other time that Effingham made it to the state baseball finals, 1942. Lost their first game. Of course, that one was in a single class tournament. Lost the first game, and that would send you home. Winburn, right there. That may have been his best fastball of the day, and Hull just has to turn around and accept it. Head back to the dugout. That had pop right on the outer edge at the knees. The perfect placed pitch. We've got some strikeouts happening here today. That's the fifth strikeout in the third inning in Winburn for Winburn in relief. Ball pops behind the umpire. Great job by Hartman. He did the best he could do, and somehow that thing took a funny hop on him. And down to second base goes Coberline with two outs. So Effingham has one state trophy in school history. Jim Maxson coached the basketball team that year that brought home a trophy, and AD David Waltman was a member of that team. But the feature name was? Uwe Blob. Uwe Blob. Seven, two and a quarter. Uve went on to quite the career. Mitch Arnold was a star in that team. Mentioned yes. David Waltman. Uve was the 17th overall pick by the Dallas Mavericks. He ended up playing. I don't. This was more than I even thought. Played in 235 NBA games. Awesome. Yep. Went to Indiana. And I actually forgot about Mitch Arnold. He could flat out play. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm so. I'm sorry. I think he went to Evansville. Not sure on that. I have to. I have to facts check. Meanwhile, talking about basketball, Miles Maxson walks, runners first and second. Much more activity on the bases today for Effingham than yesterday, though their one run matches yesterday's total output. Colton Webb, he singled to center, drove in a run. Winburn trying to fight back. Effingham, the recipient of four walks the last two innings. Mm. Be five, six, seven in the order for Sycamore, the bottom of this inning. And so the idea is here get me an out, let's get in the dugout. Webb will take it for a strike. Two balls and a strike. Hitter still in control here in the form of Colton Webb. Short outs all over for Sycamore. Now Winburn one pitch away from getting out of it. Of course, any base, definitely your defense advantage. You need to think that before it happens. The direction of the baseball, where is it taking me? Where am I going to go for the last out? Breaking for third, slow roller to third. Julio will throw across and they'll get out of it. So despite two walks, Evingham comes up empty. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Sycamore still looking for its first run in Joliet.
participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> We're happy you've joined us here on a Saturday morning. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. And today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Leading it off for Sycamore to start in the bottom of the fifth inning will be Kyle Hartman, followed by Connor Willier and Lucas Winburn, trying to solve Mr. Josh McDevitt, who's only allowed one hit while striking out six. Well, McDevitt has been impressive in so far as we know he's a power pitcher. We know we've seen pitches tip over 90 miles an hour. That's pretty big time. But he's had full command of his slider, and he's mixed in at least four or five changeups which have been effective as well. So he's not just a hard flamethrower, no pun intended, but he's also a complete pitcher. Oh, I get the flamethrower yeah, part. Yeah, the no pun intended, flamethrower, flaming hearts. Got it. Where the heck did flaming hearts come from anyway? I'll get you that story in a second. Something to do with Harry Truman speech? Indeed. I was not at that speech either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball to second, bobbled by Raditz. And Sycamore has a leadoff batter on the form of Kyle Hartman. You know, Hartman was 0 for 4 before that at bat. Now he's officially going to be 0 for 5. If you remember yesterday, Davey was 0 for 3, but he hit the ball right on the nose all three times. And then he hit that ball squared up. So he's he's hit the ball harder, and he's a nice round of applause coming off the field. This pitch runner coming in right now is Addison Peck. Peck running for the catcher, and let's see how Jason Cavanaugh will look to advance him. He'll try to do it with Connor Willier at the plate. Willier walked one of just three base runners to reach, and that's a good bunt to the third baseman, Weymouth. Up cleanly, the throw, the job gets done. Runner Peck advances to second. Absolutely great execution. Nice job, Connor Willier. That's the way it should be done. Great job, nice job, great job. I'm making sure we know that we got a bunt down. <laughs> you can tell I'm excited about that, <laughs> listeners, I really am, because it's not been a good weekend of bunting, but great execution right there, the way the game should be played. You know, the other thing I liked, <laughs> and it came away, I'm happy for you, Mark. The other, <laughs> the other thing that, that I liked uh, that was going away from where the ball was is Peck, the uh, courtesy runner, went into second, he slid into second and saying, I'm not taking any chances of somebody coming here to get me uh, standing up. So he slides into second. He was going to go no farther anyway. Lucas Winburn at the plate. McDevitt from the stretch. Ooh, he went. So I know our people are on the edge of their seats about this ball game, but also about the origin of Flaming Heart nickname. We're in a game situation, Mark. Okay. I'll get you. I'll get you that. All right. I just want people to say, where, where, they, were, they were talking about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Harry Truman, yes. Look to second. The pitch. Interesting, the shortstop, Jack Harper, holding the runner on. He didn't really break away to his normal shortstop position. So the Effingham Flaming Hearts are pinching that middle all the way through. A lot of room between first base, second base. Winburn not happy as he lifts this one to left. Long run for Caden Nichols. Kind of staggering on his way there, but he makes the catch. Yeah, Quest Hall usually thinks that ball is his, but Nichols called for it, had a beat out the entire time. Okay, the Flaming Heart logo for the Effingham High School, that was a product of a famous speech by, as you said, President Harry Truman. Next this is what Truman had to say in his speech. Shot, the successful four, man has enthusiasm. Peterson. Good work is never done in cold blood. Heat is needed to form everything. Every great achievement is a product of a flaming heart. Ah, that's the origin of the nickname of Effingham High School. 
Two outs, Colin Severson looking to play to run here. You are not only a Hall of Fame play-by-play -play voice, but you're a Hall of Fame historian as well. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Big hole on the right side. Boy, look how deep right fielder Coberline is playing. For Severson, the number eight hitter. Severson wants time, he gets it. Severson, four doubles, five triples, and a home run. Tying run, sitting at second base. Goes after it. He's down in the count, 0 and 2. Sycamore up to date, five hits on the weekend. Mm. And they need one right now to get up on the big board. McDevitt's only allowed one of those. It was a double all the way back in the first inning. Hit to Severson. Just got enough of it to stay alive. Get right back in there. McDevitt's been pounding the zone all day. Way ahead on the count, 0 and 2. Severson in swing mode right here. See if he decides to go off the plate on this pitch and try to get a chase. He did, and he did. Catcher my Miles Maxson kind of lost track of the outs. So He'll be happy to take that strikeout, and a big one it is. Seventh of the game for McDevitt. Lead-off error to sacrifice bunt. Runner is in second with just one out, but a fly-out strikeout, and we still have a one-to-nothing game going to the sixth. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Dooley Health and Care Field. That's what's happening inside the park. State baseball finals. Beyond the left center field fence, there's more ball being played. That's the miracle field of Joliet. And that field is in action every Saturday during the summer. And it's for special needs people of all ages. And you get to play in a very safe field. You get to have helpers that will help you around the bases, help you bat. That field mark. This is the very first field. There's many all over the country. That's the very first field that was built inside a professional ballpark. Really neat. Every year we come and see that and just brings joy to our hearts because it brings joy to the participants and joy, um, as you mentioned, to the people helping. Just a great, great opportunity to enjoy the game of ball regardless. You were talking earlier about Heartland Community College playing at the corn crib in Normal, they have installed a miracle field there as well, so they too have things going on the weekends. Rosado delivers Evan Weymouth to get things started here in the sixth. Rosado, the relief pitcher, four and one, 32 innings pitched, 41 strikeouts. How about that? He gets five base on balls. Now he walks number six as I speak. But a minuscule 0.44 on run average, he is, you know, one of their main relief pitchers. Three straight innings. Sycamore pitchers have walked the leadoff hitter. It cost them in the fourth and got away with it in the fifth. 
Weymouth is on here in the sixth. Fox has a single today, also struck out looking. First time, of course, he's faced Rosado. Two innings pitched by Owen Piazza, three from Lucas Winburn, and now Matt Rosado on. Winburn allowing the only run. He only allowed one hit in this time there. So mixing and matching. Got to believe that was pre-planned to utilize the depth of the pitching staff. Side of the look over, squaring the bunt, pulling it back just inside. Let's see whether Fox looks to advance the runner here again. Short lead at first. We should get a good secondary on the possible square around. Pulls it back for a strike. Good pitch to Buck because it was down. Now the count's one and two. Short lead at first. Weymouth taking no chances over there. Joey Paleo or Pulio at third base playing very deep, so he. He didn't have any thoughts that Weymouth or make that Fox was going to be trying to bunt with two strikes. Look at those fingers working right there for Fox. Wiggling all, all fingers ready to hit and run right there. Yep, breaking was Weymouth. Or actually, I got to correct myself. It's to be a run and hit because he was not going to make him swing at a two strike pitch. But the runner was in order. Yeah, that's just a relaxation technique. See those fingers moving for Fox just to mm -hmm. help him be soft on the bat. Young hitters, you want to really grip the bat as loosely as you can and no tension until right when the pitch comes. Rosado trying to put some spin on it, just stayed inside. Well, you know we're getting late in our third place game when the lineups are starting to come in for our 3A championship game. Nazareth Academy to take on Grays Lake Central. First time ever for Grays Lake Central in a state championship game in baseball. There goes a the runner again. Called strike three. Stolen base will go to Weymouth. So the sacrifice was ineffective, but yet the end result is a runner at second with one out. And the left fielder, number 41, Kaden Nichols. Well, May with his stolen base, he gave his last pregame speech of the season this morning. Yep. He's the one that brings his team together before every game and tries to create some juice. Throw behind the runner. That was a great catch and a tag from Severson, an outstanding throw from Hartman. And Tarnoki doing what he should do. That was me moving on the throw, backing up. So well executed defensively by the Spartans of Sycamore. That is a tough catch to make behind a runner from a left-handed shortstop. He has to slide by the bag and come back and get the ball. That just misses outside. 75 degrees and sunny here today in Joliet. Time is called. Her McNeely talking to Weymouth from a distance. Well, I guess we will play on. Weymouth the lead at second. Nichols goes down looking. Strikeouts continue for both teams. There's been some dominating pitching. Excellent placement it's on that ready pitch. Ready location, ready. location, Short location. location. Right on the Parker. edge. Froze Nichols. Now the conversation with Hartman and Rosado because we're back to the top of the order in Jack Harper. 
Big at bat here for Harper. Rosado delivers. Rosado just not finishing yeah. with his breaking ball. Chest over to lead leg, get through your pitch. He is commanding his fastball, but his breaking ball just not finishing his pitch. First base open, but waiting on deck is Coberline. Winds from the southwest at five miles an hour, blowing out from home plate to center field, and they will walk Harper intentionally. Not a bad move there. Of course, here in the state finals, everybody's information and stats are posted. And Jason Cavanaugh, all he has to do is glance and see that Jack Harper with a 417 batting average on the season. He's going to go to Coberline, who's had a successful tournament. Coberline, 262, nothing to be ashamed of, but not quite the numbers of the intentional walk that Harper took. Sato paints the outside corner. One run, four hits, one error for Effingham. No runs, one hit, and two errors for Sycamore. Big at bat here, Coberline. No balls and two strikes. Right now, Sycamore obviously struggling to score throughout this tournament. Down by one, that runner at second base is huge because the one run lead feels a lot bigger right now to the Spartans. Sidle delivers, and he gets the strikeout he needed. Two walks in the inning, but three strikeouts. Effingham scoreless. They leave two. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Sycamore once again looking for its first run. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships right here on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Well, how much fun has it been watching Josh McDevitt, the king of the hill here today? He's just been superlative. You can see why he's a Mizzou recruit. And I don't know if he won't project higher than that at some point. He's got the physique. He's got the pitch repertoire. He's got the savvy. He has been in total control. You know, sometimes you come into the tournament games and you take a look at all the flashy numbers. Sometimes they don't match up with what you see with your eyes. And it is spot on here with McDevitt. Number nine in the order, Joey Julio trying to get things started. Only one hit on the day. It came with two outs in the first. That's when Tommy Townsend doubled. Ball down the right field side, and that has been it. Julio played a little bit of second base and a little bit of third base today as they've juggled their lineup around just a bit. Fastball right past him. Well, he hasn't. Mm. He has not lost anything off his heater. It just gets on you. He's got the nice smooth delivery, and then, boom! That ball's right on top of you. 
took something off of that one. McDevitt bobbles, backhands, throws it down the right field line. Julio had a thought of going to second, he'll come back. So that's how this sixth inning starts. Crazy play. That's, it's a weird play in that Josh McDevitt twice had a chance to make the play. He could have yeah, feel it cleanly the first the time, and then he bobbled it. Once he feel the second time, he still had time to make a good throw to first, was not able to do so, and the gates are open for a little bit of a rally. Top of the order, Kiefer Tarnoki. I believe McDevitt took his eye off that ball momentarily, thinking I can get a tag right here. As Julio was flying past him. Short lead at first for Julio. Tarnoki in a deep crouch in that left-hand batter's box. Big swing and a miss. Tarnoki with power from both sides of the plate. One of the rare switch hitters we see nowadays. Errors are evened up now at two apiece. Tarnoki to left center field, the ball dropping, it's down. Julio headed to third. The throw not in time, Tarnoki gets to second. Daring base running for Joey Julio. He had that play right in front of him, a long, long, long run for Caden Nichols in the left center field. That ball stayed up long enough for Pulio to be able to get a good read on the ball down. He never broke stride with a play in front of him. Really good base running. Tarnoki with a base hit gives Sycamore some juice right here. Second and third, nobody out. Head coach Kern McNeely to the mound for Effingham. We're in this situation, one of our games yesterday, Mark. Second and third, nobody out. The positioning idea, you're up by a run. Positioning of where do you play your infield? Do you play and get concede a tie? Do you cut off everything here? Well, I think, I think you cut things off right now, and I will explain why, because you are the visiting team. And so that make, would make a difference in my coaching decision. Because Sycamore, quite honestly, still has six outs to play with. And Effingham only three on the offensive side. So that does go into the decision making. Plus you have a power pitcher that can strike you out and can strike out the next batter and can strike out the next batter. <laughs> this will be Matt Rosado, two of the nine, or seven strikeouts for McDevitt come right here at the hands of Rosado. And the infield is in. There's a lot of room behind the infielders and in front of the outfielders who are playing quite deep. And they choose to play the infield in. And Sycamore fans finally are able to come alive. It's been a very quiet weekend for them. Sato has driven in 16 runs. He has 10 doubles, 3 to 1 average coming into this tournament. Two strikeouts already against McDevitt here today, so his job is contact. Looks at strike one. He's not looked comfortable up there today against McDevitt. Outfield very mm. deep at all three spots. Especially in the corners, Nichols in left, Coberline in right. Pitch to Rosado. Base hit. One run scores. They will hold up Carnoki. We're tied at one. The RBI single from Matt Rosado. Rosado, two strikeouts, but not on the third at bat. As he takes the ball, does not try to do too much with it. He just poked that ball in the right field, and he will get a hero's welcome as he comes into the Sycamore bench. You hear Spartan fans on their feet with that base hit. Jimmy Antman came out of that Sycamore dugout and nearly took off the arm of Rosado <laughs> slapping hands. They finally get a chance to celebrate a little bit this weekend. Addison Peck running for Rosado.
Peck ran earlier, but this time it is as an official pinch runner. First and third, nobody out for the Spartans. And they have your number three hitter, Tommy Townsend, at the plate. Goes after the first one, fouls it straight back. First run of the tournament here in Joliet in the final, scored in the sixth inning of the third place game for Sycamore. Middle infield forced to play halfway. Townsend doubled earlier. Townsend's such a strong specimen. He can drive the baseball. And the way he turned on that double earlier was just outstanding. Bat speed through the zone. McDevitt delivers. He could use a strikeout right here. Challenge time there. That pitch. McDevitt won the battle. One and two pitch. Right on the inside corner. Out number one. That is a really big out because you got arguably the best hitter on the team with a strikeout, not advancing any runners. Peck at first. Tarnoki at third. Jimmy Ampman at the plate. Just waving that bat, daring McDevitt to come to him. A line out and a fly out today for Ampman. To the middle, looking for two. There's one, the turn. There's two. 6.43 ends the inning. What a stretch by Colton Webb at first base as he had to go far to the back corner of the base, keep oh, contact with the base. First, up, uh, first base up our D. Ray Tucker on the call and a big time play right there for Effingham, getting out of the inning with only one run. Now let's hang on one yes. moment. Our umpires are going to get together here. Looking to see whether indeed Webb was able to keep that foot on the bag. This is huge. And they will say out, and so we will be tied going into the seventh. How about that? Sycamore picking up a run at the bottom of the sixth. We're basically in extra innings. Tied at one, and Effingham to the plate. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. game here in your third place game in 3A. Let's go back to that double play at first base. We saw the umpires confer to make sure that first baseman Colton Webb had his foot on the bag. Yeah, and they did confer because the Sycamore staff, Jason Cavanaugh and staff asked him, could you appeal that? Which you can, but that was not going to be overturned and I can explain why. Once first base umpire D. Ray Tucker when he made the out call, the right arm came up. He also pointed right at the base, basically saying, yes, he was on the base. So that's how confident, and that's what he saw. So home plate umpire Paul Paffelhock doctor is not going to change that call. Really good mechanics by the umpire crew. 
Matt Rosado to face 3-4-5 in the order for Effingham, Camden, Raditz to start. And you're not saying that just because he made the emphatic move that they weren't going to try to show up a fellow umpire. It's because the other two umpires knew that the man who had the best look at it made that definite call. Right. A little pop up to Winburn. One out. What a big turn that was for Effingham. Seaver yeah, make that Harper to Raditz to Webb. West Hall has one job to do right now, and honestly, has to get on base because if he gets on base, he's going to be active on the base pass with his athleticism and base running skills. I think the conversation we just had with our home plate umpire Paul Packelhofer working in his final game of his career and his conversation with Jason Cavanaugh, I was, I believe, was just making sure that the reentry of Matt Rosado on the mound was fully complete and understood. Outfield going to deepen up just a little bit. They have to stop any balls from hitting the gap, especially with one out. Hull goes after the first pitch. Now 330 short, hitter. He doubles five home runs for the 6'1 senior. Headed to Jefferson Junior College, Jefferson, Missouri. Rosado on the mound after he had the game tying run batted in. Good job by Hull not giving up on that pitch but tracking it all the way as it landed about an inch outside. Same there. Oh, he got the call in the corner. Hull has scored the only run for Effingham today. Let off the fourth with a walk. Rosado. Pulls the string in a big way. And he has four strikeouts here in his five outs that he has gotten here since he came out of relief in the sixth. Yeah, when he first came in the baseball game and took the mound as the third pitcher of the day for Sycamore, he did not have command of his breaking ball, but he certainly does now as he wants to get it and throw it. See him ready and waiting for Maxim to step in. Well, he has some hop in his step now, does Rosado. Miles Maxson struck out, walked, and also grounded out. Count even at a ball and a piece. Ball and a strike. Now two and one. We've seen four pitchers today, and all four pitchers have exhibited the ability to throw multiple pitches effectively and in the strike zone. Sato getting that extra little breath here with two outs. Maxson is looking to do some damage on that pitch. They get to him. Colton Webb is on deck. He has one of the four hits for Effingham today. Into the infield. Rosado wanted it all the way, and he'll make the catch. Backpedaling off the mound in the middle of the infield, but it's a 1-2-3 inning for Sycamore. A run gives them a third-place trophy. Bottom hey, of the seventh coming up. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today.
Sycamore bidding for its 34th victory of the season in their 40th game of the year, and if they can get it, they will claim third place in Class 3A, first ever appearance for the Sycamore baseball team in the state finals, and they will go to work here in the bottom of the seventh with Kyle Hartman, Connor Willier, and Lucas Winburn. That's the five, six, seven hitters in the order for the Spartans. We talked about it earlier, Kyle Hartman has been on the baseball this weekend. Not a lot to show for it, but he's barreled up some baseballs, some tough luck outs last at bat on on an error, and he'll take that right now. Kyle Hartman's job, get on base. Base hit on an error, hit by pitch. Catcher's interference, base on balls, just get on the sack. Hartman with seven home runs this season. McDevitt, just his 82nd pitch of this game. He can get up to 115 before he has to be removed if we extend the game that long. Now 78 degrees, the wind blowing straight out at about six miles per hour, so it would help a fly ball. One ball, one strike to Hartman. Held up, they appeal, he did. Boy, I don't know how he held up. That was a good looking pitch for about 55 feet. Strikeout, he reached on an air for Hartman today. McDevitt delivers, this ball's hit hard into the gap. It's going to get down. It's going to roll to the wall. Hartman around first. They're going to hold him right there at second. It's a leadoff double in the bottom of the seventh for Kyle Hartman. He just flat out drove that ball to hop the wall in right center field. Quest Hall with his speed just couldn't get there in time. And that ball was struck out in front of the zone, got the barrel right through it, and just drove that ball to the wall, setting up a would-be Sycamore win. Will Clump now to run, the courtesy runner at second for Connor William. Willier. Willier had a sacrifice his last time up, sacrifice bunt. Middle infield. Holding Clump tight at second. Third baseman Weymouth in just a bit. First baseman Webb in front of the line. Right now the outfield has to think, I need to be able to throw a runner out here on a base hit. Pulled back in a bunt, took it for a strike. So he showed bunt. Didn't offer at a good pitch to bunt. So was that just a show? Mm. Or is he supposed to get the bunt down? He has not tipped off anybody by moving up in the box as of yet. Usually that's something you look for as a coach. One strike pitch. Winging all the way through that one. Willier, 416 average this season. There's holes in the infield. Middle pinching. McDevitt comes up with the big pitch. He can do that. We've seen it. He's done it all year with his strikeout pitch. That's why I'm somewhat surprised. I know you just mentioned the batting average and the hitting prowess, but they just didn't try to get a bunt down and make the defense have to make a play. Ninth strike out of the game for McDevitt. Lucas Winburn. Wiggles that bat. McDevitt varying his looks to second. Strike one. Nichols in left, Hull in center, Coberline in right. Cover line still playing very deep. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that. There is no way would they throw out the runner at home plate on any kind of ball in the outfield right now, as deep as they're playing. Short lead for Clump. They're holding him tight at second. Winburn just has to reach out. 
McDevitt in control at 0-2. Ready on 0 and 2. And now Winburn will take time. A little bit of disruption from the pitcher to the hitter, from the hitter to the pitcher. The mental part of the game. McDevitt with the step off. Plump the lead at second. Good pitch, McDevitt. Good job to stay alive from Winburn. That was a really good job getting that bat on the baseball and following it off. That was an outstanding pitch located right where McDevitt wanted, but he was able to foul it off and give himself another pitch to see. This is a long at bat. We've only had three pitches. If you're confident in Maxson, you can throw a breaking ball, you know, about 60 feet right now and let it skip. Outstanding pitch, he did the thing you requested. It didn't skip, it didn't need to. Back-to-back -back strikeouts with a runner at second. Double-digit strikeouts for the game. He did indeed bury that ball. It was almost unhittable how that ball dove so late. Now it's up to Colin Severson. Severson has struck out twice today against McDevitt. But let's go back to something we mentioned earlier, how hot he's been in the tournament as of late. He's right on top of the plate. Accident with the stop out in the other batter's box. Severson up off the knob of the bat. Already here early in the count. Outfield still playing quite deep. Searson has some pop. Everybody's infield, infield's got to knock down the baseball right now. If you don't feel it cleanly, you got to at least keep it in front. Right on the outside corner, Severson didn't like it. One ball, one strike, two outs. Josh McDevitt delivers. Almost the same spot. Two balls and a strike. Severson staying rock solid in that batter's box. Two one pitch, strike two. Two balls, two strikes. McDevitt's throwing it everywhere but down the middle. Yeah, and you know if you're Severson right now, you got to be in a little bit more hitter mode. His job right now isn't to get on base. His job is to drive in that run. So got to be a little bit more aggressive. He misses, the count three and two. If they get to him, we have a pinch hitter on deck. That would be Kyle Preble, a sophomore with just three at bats on the season. Three, two pitch coming up to Severson. McDevitt is ready. The 3 2. Severson stays alive. That swing did not have much authority behind it, but he lives to see another pitch. So that's a quality foul ball right there just to stay alive. Will Clump, the runner at second, he's been there. 
the entire inning after a leadoff double from Hartman. Short lead. Severson goes down swinging. McDevitt strikes out the side with the runner at second base. Great opportunity for Sycamore, but Josh McDevitt rises to the occasion. We're going to play extras near third place game in 3A. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. One run in the fourth for Effingham, one run in the sixth for Sycamore. We stand at identical line scores. One, four, and two. One run, four hits, and two errors for each of these two teams. Boy, it's been dominating pitching. The strikeout pitch has been there all year for Josh McDevitt, and it certainly was in that inning. Gives up a leadoff double, and then one, two, three strikes, you're out to three different batters. Colton Webb to lead things off for Effingham. First pitch right off the fist foul territory. One out. Julio with a catch in foul territory. Next batter for Effingham. Third in relief for Matt Rosado. Juan Piazza went the first two. Lucas Winburn went three. He allowed the one run. Rosado with four strikeouts in two and a third innings. He'll face Evan Weymouth. A little bit of everything for Weymouth today. Hit into a double play, reached on an error, and walked. Starts his stance in that extreme open position. One foot, the right foot, a back foot on the chalk, right by home plate. And that left foot eventually will end up near the chalk, near third base. Rosado showing, showing so much more confidence now than he did when he first entered this ball game. Yeah, he's probably got a little bit more velocity. He's pitching with adrenaline right now. It was Rosado that had the game tying RBI. That inning ended with a double play ball. Zeffingham turned two. Three and two, big pitch coming up here with one out in the eighth. Got to get a base runner here, try to create something on the bases. Weymouth, number seven in the order for Curran McNeely's team. Effingham, 22 and 16 this season. Got him swinging. Strikeout number five, and the K's are adding up here today in our first game. Yeah, they're adding up on both sides. Three pitchers for Sycamore, one for Effingham, and all four of those are showing the ability to miss bats consistently. That's 11 strikeouts now for Sycamore pitchers. Effingham can look back through the first six innings. The Flaming Hearts left 10 runners on base and only could produce one run. Here's Spencer Fox. He has one of the four hits. Good change up there right there, change of pace. Keeping hitters off balance, showing two and three pitches. How about a quick inning right there from Matt Rosado, a foul out to third, back-to-back -back strikeouts. He gets his team back in the dugout. A run wins it 
for Sycamore. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Ninety-five pitches thrown by Josh McDevitt. He comes out for the eighth inning. The first batter he will face will be a pinch hitter, Kyle Preble, 6'2", 205-pound sophomore. He's played in one game, three at bats. Does not have a hit. Hello, welcome to the state tournament. <laughs> I gotta believe he put up some prolific numbers on a lower level capacity to be called up to the varsity for this tournament than to be put in this situation. 11 strikeouts for Josh McDevitt. This is the ninth spot in the order. Keeper Tarnoki waits on deck for the Spartans. Last inning, Kyle Hartman started with the double. He was stranded there as McDevitt struck out the side. He just blows one past. Preble. Preble was not ready to put the barrel through the zone there. Just checked it up. Very indecisive swing. Now he looks off speed. So what about a 10 mile per hour difference in the first two pitches that Preble has seen. Let's see if McDevitt goes right after him. He did, he got him. One, two, three. So McDevitt now with 98 pitches. For people wondering how long can he go, he can go to 115 today, 115. And if he would start the last hitter with 112, 113, 114, you could finish that batter. You know, I think that was probably part of the message in the dugout. Let's just get right after these guys. Top of the order, he has to face Tarnoki here for the fourth time. Tarnoki, the base hit. His last time up, he got as far as third. You remember when Rosado had the base hit that drove in the tying run. Tarnoki was held at third because there were no outs. And that's where he was left. And if Tarnoki can get on, we know he's got speed. Max it in, the catcher's not been challenged today. He's not had to been. Not that many runners today for Sycamore. Tarnoki. The fans from Effingham thought it was strike two. A line out, a fly out, and a single. Inside out, foul. Down the left field line. Thought that was a fair ball when it left his bat. I it, did too. It, it hooked in a hurry away. Two balls, two strikes, one gone here in the eighth. Ground ball will find a hole, it does. One out single for Kiefer Tarnoki. He's the winning run at first base. And he just dropped the barrel of bat right over the baseball. Didn't try to do too much with it. Pulled the hands through. Not a chance for Raditz or Webb to come make a play. Matt Rosado will come to the plate. He's driven in the tying run. As of the moment, he's the pitcher of record for Sycamore. We'll keep an eye on Tarnoki at first base. Short lead, but he can run. See if he bluffs it all or just takes off here. Ball in the dirt. 
Maxiden has no play. Great read from Tarnoki, and there's your winning run at second base. And that's what a great read is, is when you are a runner, you get your secondary lead, you find the baseball, and then you read the flight of the ball. He saw the spin of the ball, got away from the catcher, and he's able to advance. Really good fundamental base running. Junior, Matt Rosado. Again, we'll repeat ourselves. The outfield very deep. A ball that gets to the outfield should score Tarnoki. A ball on the ground, we should say. And Tarnoki does indeed have to take a emphasized secondary lead when the delivery from McDevitt comes. Called strike. Rosado leaning over, didn't think that was the case. That was a big pitch right there for McDevitt. Two balls and one strike. Pitch to Rosado. It's two and two. Really like the way McDevitt handles himself. He blew out that air. You know, he took a deep breath, blew it out, tried to relax himself. It's a third place game, Dave, but these guys are out there competing, aren't they? We've seen a lot of third place games where they're just basically, you know, okay, go play, but both teams getting after it. Yeah, and that's been the case from the first inning. You know, sometimes we see that, and then late innings, things tighten up. 2 2 pitch. Nearly bit. It's three and two. First base is open. On deck, Tommy Townsend. Yeah, because depending on this, if you get this batter, you probably walk Townsend, right, with the base open? Mm-hmm. You sure would. Well, you've got Jimmy Antman behind him, so yeah. you've got some thunder coming up behind Rosado here. Huge pitch in this game in the eighth inning. Rosado takes it for strike three. McDevitt continued to work him away that entire at bat. McDevitt living on the edge. And because you were living on the edge, that zone probably expanded just a little bit, to be honest with you, and got the call. If you're consistently at one spot, you'll get that call. Here they're going to pitch to Townsend. Look at the hole between first and second. First baseman Webb playing tight to the line. Now Raditz will come over and from second base to help out. He's got a feeling Townsend's going to barrel this ball. If he's going to be at somebody, I don't know that. But got to got to think he's going to square this baseball up. A dozen strikeouts for Josh McDevitt. That was the cut. He was all <laughs> over that one. Now we have not seen anyone warm up for Effingham. There's been no one down the right field line. So if somebody had to come in, they would probably come in without, you know, off the field without being loose. Two outs. Townsend. He held up. The pitch was close. Ampman waits on deck if they get to him. The game is at the plate. Goes right through it. Hey, he pulled off that one. He tried to turn on that baseball, and the baseball came down and in on him. Can McDevitt do it again? Can he strike out the side again? He did that in the seventh inning. The pitch. Call strike three. He does. 13 strikeouts. Josh McDevitt striking out the side in the sixth. 
are in the seventh, stranding a runner at second base. He strikes out the side in the eighth, leaving a runner at second base. We're going to the ninth in a tie ball game. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The Conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! <laughs> Go to the top of the ninth. Nine of the last 11 outs in this game have come by way of strikeout. Pitching's been dominant. Only nine hits on the board between the two teams and a plethora of punch outs. Mm. Hayden Nichols, number nine hitter in the order. He'll start the top of the ninth. Still on the hill is Rosado for the Sycamore Spartans. And this will be get out of play behind the dugout. Rosado working very quickly. He's had good rhythm as a third pitcher. They start with Piazza, then Winburn, and then it's been Rosado. A huge inning here for Effingham as Rosado gets his seventh strikeout in three and a third innings. Josh McDevitt has exceeded his pitch count. He's done. So Effingham will have to come up with someone else. So Sycamore holds Effingham here. It would have to be a relief to the Spartans not have to see a Division I pitcher facing them. High level Division I pitcher. Yeah. Rosado continues to pour in strikes. Jack Harper leading it off. He comes to plate for the fifth time in this game. He was intentionally walked the last time he came up in the sixth, and that paid off for Sycamore. You got a strikeout to end that inning. The only inning Effingham has scored has been in the fourth. The only time Sycamore has put a run across the plate, the sixth. We still have three games to go following this one, a state championship game in 3A to follow. Grays Lake Central and Nazareth Academy. They've been hanging around a while waiting for this one to be completed. Fouled out of play to a barren berm down the left field line. That's interesting, Nazareth was down in the seats, getting ready to play, and they have now disappeared, probably somewhere out of the sunshine. Grays Lakes got the benefit of those couple trees up there. They're taking full advantage of the shade up there on the hill. Two balls, two strikes to Harper. Well, I think Nazareth and a lot of folks here thought that when Sycamore was rallying in the sixth and had the bases loaded, with Jimmy Antman at the plate Outstanding hitter. I don't know that they realized and figured he'd hit into a double play. Harper hit that ball right on the nose, right to the third base from Julio. Two outs here in the ninth. Julio didn't need to move, and his glove was down around his waist, and boom, he had to get it up right by the right by his shoulder, was able to spear that hard hit line drive. Coberline singled his first time up, grounded out, walked, and struck out. This will be the second time he has faced Matt Rosado. Owen Piazza started, Lucas Winburn came on for three innings. And this has been Rosado's game since then. 
Will this stay in play? Down the right field line, who wants it? Townsend, no. Fair ball. Oh, did he, who got it? Who ended up catching that? I think it was, uh, was it? Hunter Burtz, I think. So Britz comes yeah. out of there, makes the play. Well, that's how we end the top of the ninth inning. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. There'll be a new pitcher on the hill for Effingham. for Effingham as Josh McDevitt, absolutely brilliant today, exceeded the 115 pitch count. So he is done. So here's our outfield positioning, I do believe. Spencer Fox, who is a DH for McDevitt, will come into the game. He'll play left field. Harper comes, Jack Harper comes from shortstop to pitcher. Quest Hall moves in to shortstop, or to shortstop from center field. And that slides, I believe, is that Caden Nichols in center field? I think Caden Nichols has stayed in left. Okay, that may be uh, Coberline that goes to. All right, well, we'll check it out, but a different outfield configuration. Jack Harper as a pitcher. One and one on the season, 11 innings pitched. Not very much action there. 15 strikeouts, six base on balls in his 11 innings. First batter he faces will be Jimmy Antman. Harper comes out of the bullpen. He loves that challenge and he's faced with one here. Antman, power hitter for Sycamore. And Antman up in the count, two balls and a strike. Antman fights this one off, it drops, it's fair. Antman will hit the bag at first, he'll stay right there. Lead off single. Coverline is indeed moved to center field. He can throw from that position. Kate Nichols remains in left field. Spencer Fox, the right fielder. After the single by Antman, Kyle Hartman, he's hit the ball hard all weekend. He doubled his last time up and really put a charge in it all the way to the right center field wall. Antman the lead at first. Two balls, no strikes to Kyle Hartman. Catcher for Sycamore. Short lead at first for Antman. Every pitch so crucial here in the ninth inning. Antman's extended just a little bit, but I don't think he's running right now. No, he's. Yeah, he actually, <laughs> and when you shortened, said that, shortened, shortened it up. Yes. Two balls and a strike now to Hartman. Hartman rips this one. 
Fair ball, left field. Antman pulls up at second. Runners first and second. Nobody out. And once again for the third straight inning. The winning run sitting at second base for Sycamore. The Hartman's had some good pass to the baseball all weekend long. Finally, a little bit of something to show for. Last couple of bats, he picks his team up. And Spartans with a chance to put this one away. Once again, Will Klump will be the courtesy runner for Hartman. Connor Willier. He will come to the plate after this conference on the mound is broken up. I need 500 bucks. They're talking bunt defenses right now. Well, this was a somewhat similar situation as last time for Willier. Spartans decided not to bunt. Are you bunting? This time, first and second. You have eight minutes second, so you don't have the wheels that you did the last time out there on second base. Well, with Williams' numbers, I said against McDevitt, I would have mm -hmm. bunted because of his flame-throwing strikeout, punch-out ability. But you have a relief pitcher here that is not, he's a great athlete, but has not pitched a lot this year. I think with the, his ability to hit Williams, I, I think I let him get a swing or two in, yes. 400-plus hitter. Connor Willier. And he is bunting. Chance to go to third. They passed it up. Close play at first. Second and third. One out. Willier moves him over. Great job getting it done. He bunted it right back at Harper. But if you get it down on the ground, you got a chance. And Interesting, Jason Kavanaugh didn't bunt you know, against the flamethrower. He did bunt this situation. Lucas Winburn will come to the plate. The outfield has come in from their deep positioning. And as you're an outfielder, you have to say, if I catch a fly ball, I have to throw a guy out at the plate. No cut involved. And I don't know. Got a base on balls here. Yeah, there it well, is. Well, Just well, to set up force outs. So Winburn will head to first. Base is loaded. One out. Severson with the play. He is the happiest guy in the building to not see Josh McDevitt out there. Nazareth thinks that Severson's going to get the job done. Yeah, they've they're returned. Coming, they're coming back <laughs> to return mode. We shall see infield in. Outfield, you're right. They did not move in enough to throw out a runner on a fly ball. Severson looking to put the ball in play. To third. One out at home. Weymouth to Maxiden. There are two outs the inning. First ball hunting, he got it, but he hit it right at the third baseman. And that's why that force, so that's why that potential base on ball is so important. Set up the force out at home plate. Joey Puglio re-enters this ball game to hit. He was pinch hit for last time. Checks it up. Maxident smothers that ball at home plate. Sycamore fans are on their feet. The infield defense can relax a bit. The outfield pretty much the same position they were moments ago. Julio went. Harper dropped down just a little bit on that breaking ball. I don't know if that was his intent. But Puglio kind of bailed a little bit with his front shoulder. Puglio, a 363 batting average entering this tournament. A ball and a strike to him. Five nine senior will step back in. Maxson's got to block everything back there, throw his body in front of the baseball. Now two strikes on Puglio. Yeah. 
Harper walks off the mound, comes back on. Julio right on top of the plate. Ball and two strikes, runners at every base. And that gets away! Wild pitch and this game is over! An unbelievable and unexpected ending to this game and it comes in the ninth inning. And Sycamore will finish in third place with a two to one win today. A walk off, wild pitch. We talked about the pressure on Max and never, didn't have a chance of that one. Harper went with a break ball down and away. They missed by a good foot and a half. An easy score. The Spartans walk off for third place. Sycamore, multiple opportunities to put this one away. Finally, they do in the ninth inning. Come from behind, a one-run game. Here in your first game of the day, the third place game in Class 3A. Next up, it's championship baseball. The state championship in Class 3A to be decided. Will it be Grays Lake Central? First time the Rams have ever been in the state championship game, and they're taking on the defending state champs, the Roadrunners for Nazareth. But that's going to do it for Mark and me here. Stick around. We'll have awards presentation. Once again, your final score, Sycamore 2, Effingham 1, third place in Class 3A.
Number nine, Caden Coberlin. Number 10, Colton Lloyd. Number 11, Ethan Jones. Number 13, Max Sechrist. Number 21, Colton Webb. Number 23, Andrew Donaldson. Number 30, Braxton Lewis. Number 35, Camden Raddis. Number 37, Peter Rosen. Number 38, Marcus Banning. Number 41, Caden Nichols. Number 42, Spencer Fox. Number 45, Josh McDevitt. And number 47, Braden Burden. Your fourth place, Effingham Flaming Hearts. And now, would Coach Curran McNeely and the captain, 
representatives of the Effingham Flaming Hearts step forward and receive your fourth place trophy.